Hey, what's up guys? It's T-Bone here. Welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. So in yesterday's episode, I talked about a team that I could use to take down uh, no challenge mission 1-1, but I just felt like that team wasn't quite diverse enough, and I thought a little bit more yesterday. And then after the video, I came up with a team that used a bunch of free cards. So we have Snatch Harbor Brute, which is a three-star card that you can get from missions. So you can actually get it from mission 1-5. It's a free card that you can farm for. And then uh, I do have one event card, and that is the Pro Cambri uh, Pro Cam Cambrius. And I do have the uh, support card Melio. And then the two other support cards I have, one is Tanu. Now, mine is fully awakened, but it, it doesn't matter. You can have one at non-awakened. It's actually, I'm using these cards for their gem spawn abilities. So you, it doesn't matter if you don't have it quite uh, as high level. And then I also have uh, Heart, Hearted Josephine. So these are cards that will really produce gems and really you're using this card to do the, to use it for the turn delay. And so I think this is going to be a relatively more accessible deck. Hopefully that you, you already have a copy of Tanu and a copy of uh, Josephine. She's also available in the revival pack today for 300 gems if you are looking to get one. As far as relics go, I do have one of the corrupt relic and also the human relic, as well as the seafoam pendant from this uh, water commander event. So those are the ones I'm taking advantage of. Plus I had from before a demigod relic from a long time ago. So these are the, the relics I'm using. And I put in also just a water, uh, a Kedas bow to, to round out the, the, the team. With these four relics, I can actually power up a uh, Stash Harbor on turn one because I needed 20 gems. Now, if you don't have uh, the demigod relic, you can also use something like this. So um, these water skulls, or you can use some of these jewels, the ones that you, you can use to enchant your legend relic, they actually produce one water gem as well, or the you know gem of their affinity in this case is a water one. So it will at least help a little bit on turn one. You may or may not be able to power up everything, but we could you can at least give that a try. So what I wanna do is walk through this, and this is gonna be unedited, but I felt that it would be better for me to talk through my thought process in this particular fight. So the idea here is we want to go through these challenge levels and we don't necessarily have all the teams. That's why go, focusing on a 1-1 one -one is a good idea because you can use more cards. And these, this is going to be a, a card that you can, um, you, know, you can get relatively easily and hopefully this works for you. So on turn one, all you want to do is make sure that you match everything. And so you'll see that once you do, you're going to have everything powered up, but, but the most important thing is that the Statch Brew is powered up. And so let's go ahead and use the skill. And what we want to do at this point is we want to continue to whittle down the, the health of the boss. Now on the first wave, the boss isn't as high, so you can actually uh, take it out in a few hits. And so during this time, what you want to do is, uh, you, you, you can see I use their abilities to create as many gems as I could. and it's not quite sufficient yet to power uh, to you know power up uh, brute just yet, and unfortunately right now because of the because of the chaos I'm unable to um, you know save the gems here. But what we can do is hopefully it will get dispelled and we'll power up and let's just try again. So I was able to fully heal myself, and right now we're just gonna sort of do this again. But you can see the health of the boss is already about halfway. And so we are able to do some good damage. We just need to make sure that we can do some uh, gem matches so that we can delay the turn long enough so that chaos would actually, uh, would actually disappear. And so let's go and do this so that this way we will guarantee to power up stat. And so because he doesn't have a um, a cooldown. You can you can power up every turn. It's a really good idea to bring in as many uh, gen spawners as you can. Uh, so Josephine's ability is nice too because you can actually have a passive spawn. So every time you attack, she she will actually create five gems. So you can always get some um, some gem gem matches throughout the match. And also she gives you invulnerability. And so let's go ahead and do another match here. And so at this point. This is going to be the last turn for a chaos, so chaos is go, gonna go away. And if we can keep this up, then we can actually uh, sort of make sure that we attack the boss as many times as we could. And it looks like we're probably not gonna be able to power up Statch just yet. So hopefully, I'm hoping that we could actually, um, I'm hoping we can either take it out right now or 
yeah, hopefully we can take it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a power jump match right here and see if we can take it out because now we powered up Stash, and I believe this is enough damage to take the boss out. So good, we're now sort of starting fresh again. And the thing is, we don't have the battle skills for Melio and Tanu, and this is going to be another Chaos boss. So let's go ahead and use Stash right here. And this is pretty much, you know, the sort of the same same process that you want to follow. And don't worry if you are going to lose your power gems, because right now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have enough um, battle skill, you have enough gems so that you can power up all the cards. And at some point you are going to utilize the ability of the event card uh, Pearl Cambrius as well. And so unfortunately we, we were short just a couple. So that is sort of the challenge right here, but with the combination of brute as well as melio you're you're not really going to be worried about health health isn't really a concern here so let's go ahead and uh, activate everything again i kind of want to get them to about four or five uh, turn delay and then we're going to we're going to activate everything in three turns so let's go ahead and do that so you can see that we were able to to um activate that so that's good and what i want to do is just Go ahead and match some of the gems there. And right now I have one more turn remaining. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and save some of these gems because we can see as power gems are starting to form right now. So it's a good idea now to do non-water gem matches if you can because you're going to have um, power gems forming. And now what I can do is with one more turn here, I could actually, I could do one more. I just want to make sure that I don't accidentally match the water gems there. So that's good. So now we can go ahead and activate all of the skills here. And this might be sufficient for us to take out uh, take out Vladim right now. So let's go ahead and do that. And what if we can take it out, then what we can do is we can save the power pa battle skill of Stag again for the final boss here. And so this this anglerfish, uh, Serasio, will cast thorns, and so you do want to be careful about that. And if you sort of find yourself in a place where you are getting hit by the thorn, that's this is when you can use uh, Josephine's battle skill. So let's go ahead and do this. And I think we'll probably have to wait two turns before the battle skill of Tanu and Emilio is ready. So during this time... Let's go ahead and try to match as many as we could, All right? And it looks like we're not going to get there, but that's okay. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to do a match right now. And then I'm going. I'm also going to try and see if I can get more water gems to drop, sort of what we did in wave two, um, if possible. But... Even if it doesn't, what you can do is once you're ready, you can then go ahead and use up the skills here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try once by activating the skill of the event card. This will give the, you know, this will make the boss take more damage. And let's go ahead and activate everything here. Except for Josephine. You want to kind of save Josephine for when you need it because you don't want to, um, you don't want to lose your invulnerability if you can help it. And so this might actually give it about I would say probably take at least half, if not more, of the health here. So that's about half right there. So what we can do is we can sort of rinse and repeat right now. Uh, it'll just take about three turns, and we should be good to go there. So let's go ahead and just do the non-water gem matches right now. See if we can get some uh, power gems to, to form. And it looks like we're going to, you know, it's unfortunate we're going to match some here, but that's all right. We're just going to go ahead and... Uh, wait until the next turn for all of the battle skills to be ready again and let's go ahead and activate everything so same thing and this time the boss is going to take additional damage because you were able to activate twice uh, within the four turn duration and at this point then we can go ahead and do another uh, do another power gem swap and this time we're going to deal even more damage, so we're guaranteed to be able to take out the boss at this point. So it is a longer fight, right? So with this team, it does take a little bit longer, um, but 
with the limited limited keys that we have, I think that it's actually not too bad. I actually enjoy playing this and you know sort of thinking about what I need to do to take out the boss. And if you don't want to, you could always loot. Uh, there was you know there was a really good idea from one of the commenters in the previous video uh, where you can just loot. You know at this point, if you go to battle here, you get a one to one ratio of your keys to the to the key that you get so you can loot at five times then you can get you know five keys so it's it is actually better that way than trying to loot it at the very very last level and getting four keys by spending five i mean you you lose some trophies but you know if the goal is to get soul bosses then that would that's what i would recommend and so that's the the team that i used now you could switch around a little bit the reason why i brought in tanu and also josephine is like i said for their um gem spawn abilities and also to take advantage of their relics. So if you wanted to, you could probably put in uh, duplicate copies of Josephine if you have them, but that means you will lose one of the relics if you don't have it. Uh, or if you have another copy, let's say if you had uh, uh, you know, something a little different, um, you know, mainly I wanted to show using the support card, but if you had better cards that also work in here, for example, uh, the trickster, if you had a trickster, or if you had, um, you know, Crowblade, Crowblade uh, Raidu, or if you had, you know, Dynamite Dougal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These all will work, but I think adding the two turn delay card in here is going to be your best bet. So that's what I wanted to show. That's all I wanted to show for today. Uh, hopefully this will help you through the rest of the weekend for your challenge bosses. Like I said, all you have to focus on is challenge level 1-1. You don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, that's what I've been focusing on and I'm able to get, get six keys here. And so, uh, you know, give this a try. Let me know uh, how this works out for you and hopefully it's helpful. So uh, that's all. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. I'll see you next time.